Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this short game to come video, we're going to be discussing Vega 10 and Vega 11. The former is going to be debuting before the end of this year, and Vega 11 is going to be debuting uh, early 2017, at least according to these rumours. And we also have some details regarding the architectural changes between the GCN versions. Now, as usual, these rumours have not been confirmed by AMD, and therefore the validity of these rumours as you can imagine, is down to your personal um, tastes. We're going to see the GPU debuting before the end of this year. Uh, that's specifically going to be the Pro variant, but it's possible we're also going to see AMD showing off the gaming versions as well. But new to these rumours is that this is going to be the fifth generation of GCN. Now we had already heard that there are going to be some architectural changes with Vega, but this puts them to light. Basically, as you're probably aware, Vega 10 is indeed going to feature high bandwidth memory 2, up to 16 gigabytes of HBM2. We'll get into that more in a moment. But there is also going to be some changes to the architecture which ensure peak stream processor occupancy and also reduce times to both the cache and main memory, which as I just said is HBM2. What does that mean? Well, in theory it means that the GPU should better be able to load balance data across a myriad of stream processors. This should, again, in theory mean that in certain scenes which have a lot of complexity and the GPU is being maxed out, all shaders should be able to be working 100% efficiency and we won't see instances where um, scheduling conflicts occur or, for example, there is um, latency associated with the caches or memory or whatever. So theoretically, we should be seeing a more efficient architecture. Furthermore, yet again, we're going to see improvements to the color compression of the GPU. Color compression, just for your FYI, is a lossless compression, which means that the graphics card can shunt data around its various caches and processors much more efficiently. Essentially, not only is it smaller, so it takes up less room in memory, but also because it's smaller, it means that it can be transferred faster, and obviously that makes a better use of the video card's bandwidth. Now, Vega 10 is going to be released in multiple configurations. We've discussed this at length previously that there is indeed going to be pro versions of the card as well as Vega 10 Duo, but supposedly the high-end version is going to feature up to 4096 shaders, we've known that through leaks, but this high-end card, the absolute max TDP is going to be 230 watts, which theoretically means a 6 and an 8-pin power connector which should be sufficient to run it. Vega 11, though, is a bit different. So as you're probably aware, you've got the RX 460, 470, and 480, and they are naturally utilizing Polaris. Vega 11 takes Polaris and puts it on steroids. We don't know if it's got a additional shaders or ROPs or TMUs or whatever. What we do know is it will have an updated architecture. We could assume it's going to feature GCN 5, in other words, the same architecture as Vega 10, but combine that with higher clock speeds. One issue with the RX 480 and Polaris as a whole has indeed been the clock speeds. Basically, it's just been that AMD have not been able to crank them up. Now, I'm going to assume that that's a combination of non-mature 14nm process and combining that with the fact that it is a new architecture. I'm going to assume, and I don't have any information to back this up other than it makes a great deal of sense, that AMD will have better tweaked their architecture for higher clock speed, much say how Pascal did over Kepler, and combining this with the fact that their um, vendor, sorry, their partners will have much more mature 14nm processors. Theoretically, we should see 1400 or 1500 megahertz, but once again, we don't know. Now, what we do know is Vega 10, and this is the thing that I'm a bit suspect about, is Vega 11 will feature high bandwidth memory 2 also, but it will feature only half the number of stacks and therefore go up to just 8 gigabytes. Now, there's a couple of reasons behind that. Those reasons, those reasons excuse me, are being cited as power. In other words, HBM2 is more power efficient than, let's say, multiple uh, GDDR5 uh, chips. But this will naturally help notebooks for power and performance and also for the desktop as well. Now, whether that is going to be all down the line, 
we don't know. So, for example, it could be, and once again, I'm just making an assumption here, a guess. It could be that Vega 11 would be the RX 490, and Vega 10 would be the Radeon Pro, or the Radeon Fury, or whatever. But I just don't know that. So, we're just, once again, making assumptions on that. There's not been any rumours which confirm that part, only that Vega 11 will, indeed, at least some of the parts be using HBM2. Just to remind you all, there's also going to be a dual Vega part, which is supposedly only going to be seeing light for the professional market, and AMD are supposedly hard at work on the graphics card as we speak. Now, just once again to remind you all, these are not confirmed rumours by AMD. Some of the rumours, for example, the fact that we've seen Polaris 11 replace, um, sorry, Vega 11 replace Polaris is pretty, pretty well known, but the other rumours, especially in terms of the architecture, aren't exactly solid information. I wouldn't be surprised because at the end of the day, um, most of that makes a great deal of sense because it would be how you know, you would logically tweak the GPU to improve performance, but ultimately, I, you know, don't know, because I'm not sitting there in the labs of AMD, unfortunately. But hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.